Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. The military map has just been updated, we have a single update for today, I wonder why, but we have lots of things that are happening on the front lines. Let's go! First let's uh, zoom in to the Kharkiv area, where Russia recently got their successful attack towards the south. They want to take Ruski Tushki. Tishki, and they took Lipsy and Slobozhansky villages on the way to Borshova. So for Borshova, we don't know so far who controls that. All of those gray areas are those that doesn't belong to anyone. So the fighting is ongoing uh, over here. And if we scroll for the time, so it happened today, uh, yesterday. Yesterday they got their successful attack. It's like this. It was like that, but. Today there is no any movement. Today is the 2nd of June, for me it's already the 3rd of June. And for you, I don't know if you in the United States, probably it's the 2nd for you. But there is no major change in this part, my friends. It means that Russia simply hasn't enough resources for their successful attack towards Kharkiv. Kharkiv is very close to Russian border and that is why it's very difficult to protect it against Russia because Russia has their main bases near to the border. And let's just measure how long from the Kharkiv from the edge somewhere. Just 25.5 kilometers, my friends. Today I cycled around 60 kilometers just for the shopping to the city and for me it was quite a short distance. So this distance is really short. It's nothing, my friends. That is why we are not so successful here in this area so far, but uh, I hope in a few weeks we're gonna return this part to Ukraine. And we're gonna go to Izum, Russia took vast lands here. They put the forces over here and over here. Let me show you. I'll scroll down to yesterday. It was yesterday, and today. Just look at this. Uh, wow, it's it's huge actually. Let's measure. We can measure 13 kilometers. They covered, but you see, they took mostly forests and fields. So here are the forests uh, and this kind of small village and this at this part they probably took Stodonok, yeah? We gonna, yeah, they took Stodonok, the big village actually, but mostly they took just forests and nothing more, probably gonna propel to reach this uh, Siversky Donets river and we have a couple of the bridges here for the other shore, I hope those bridges will be destroyed, my friends. Uh, this is quite Svetahirsk, this is quite big town, I would say. I wonder if they can take uh, this uh, town over here, uh, because it's on their part of the shore. And from the rest part here, Liman, let me check. No, there is, oh, we have the fighting area ongoing on this part. So probably gonna uh, fence, uh, put their attack towards the river here. Also, probably they are taking woods because you can hide your armored vehicles and other equipment in the woods. So I expect them to reach uh, this river all the way through the front lines, but they will be not successful crossing this uh, river. We know that from the experience. So my idea that they gonna probably regroup their forces over here, they gonna cross this river here in a safe place near to Izum and they gonna put their major attack towards uh, Slavyansk over here. And they took Liman probably just to deflect our forces. They will not cross this river because it's very dangerous for them. But for that they need to regroup their forces and that may take two or three months, my friends. It's not the easy task. They are also exhausted. And now let's go to the hottest spot of the front lines. It's Severodonetsk, where we have success, you see. It's today's chart and we were able to take back this part of the city. So city uh, fighting is ongoing. It was yesterday and it is today. Why is it so? Because uh, I say to you that Lysychansk is staying on the high ground. If you put artillery on a high ground, you have more precisions and you have longer range. So for Russians, it's just I see it as a trap for Russians. We let them in the city and now cause them severe casualties 
in Severodonetsk. But still I think that they will be able to take this city because at this particular point they have advantage in the armored vehicles, in the military equipment, in the soldiers, in almost everything. They thrown 50% half of their army towards this area. So I'll put my negative forecast probably here that they're gonna reach all this territory. They're gonna take it under their control until this river, but Lysychansk will stay under Ukrainian control for a long time. It's better to say forever because soon we're gonna receive the rocket artillery systems from the United States and many more toys for Ukrainian army. We're gonna hit Russians hard, believe me, my friends, and I think it's gonna start in a couple of months. So guys, today I'm very surprised with what we have in the Severodonetsk. I wasn't expecting that we'll take the ground back from Russians. And from Severodonetsk area, let's go to the south to Papasna area where Russians changed their direction of attack. You see, before they wanted to take the Bahmut, we clearly see it on their attack direction and they struggling. They were struggling because we have our counterattacks here here and it was one here but they uh, put defense on that and they were unsuccessful to take this road towards uh, Slovansk over here it was their first point and the next point was to cut this road for supplies towards uh, Lysychansk and Severodonetsk and now they realize that they are unsuccessful near to the Bakhmut because we have lots of our defense lines and they put their attack towards north, towards uh, Lysychansk itself. But however, they are still far from Lysychansk. So today they took uh, Lipove and uh, Nirkove villages. So we can scroll down to yesterday and they put their forces over here. However, here we have just filled fields, uh, open lands, and they are good targets for our artillery. How far are they from Lysychansk, my friends? So let's put the point here. 17 and half kilometers. Well, it's a short distance, but they have nowhere to hide, so they will struggle to reach uh, Lysychansk from this area. However, it's kind of dangerous for Ukraine, I would uh, admit, because they already crossed uh, the Sirsky Donetsk River from this part and yeah it's a major tr threat for Ukrainian army this area and this one let's go more to the south here no change and here also no change I would say however let me check yeah no changes and here also no changes my friends our main counter attack is going through this territory we already took it back and we took back uh, this small village of Ivankova Russia took it uh, two days ago but we successfully taken back this Ivankova so as you can see some of the settlements uh, changed hands it's usual for this kind of war and in general my friends seeing the picture of what was happening and what is happening in Ukraine all of that green where Russia was uh, until the April so in April they freed this territory because they have to at first I think they didn't expect that we'll fight so hard that is why they sent less forces than required to occupy this vast land of Ukraine you need to have at least two three million soldiers plus you need to have the armory equipment which is up to date modern vehicles modern tanks and aviation however we destroyed more than thousand tanks of russia more than 200 airplanes fighter jets and helicopters my friends they are struggling and they send the old equipment nowadays to ukraine they don't have the general mobilization they have the hidden one but still not enough soldiers not enough resources to send to ukraine so here we have some priority every day of this war is a big minus for russia and small tiny little plus for ukraine because we still have lots of men i apply to our military branch they say stand by because i don't have the military experience and that is why i started my channel to fight on the front lines of the media war my friends and of course we'll have lots of military equipment coming from our western allies my friends you are awesome
you are supporting ukraine you are supporting my channel and now please press the like subscribe to my channel also if you can of course you may support me on patreon or paypal those guys who support me during those hard times that we have i temporarily lost my job so thank you so much and part of the money i spend for charity to support ukrainian people you are awesome my friends so i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time